Are you an architecture applicant? Did you just get a bunch of acceptance offers and you're not sure what to accept? And you got to decide by June 1st? I've got a question for students, faculty, and program coordinators, architecture programs in Canada. Could you help out some of my students who've applied to architecture programs and now have multiple acceptance offers? And they want to know which one should they accept. So they're often asking me, what school is the best for me? I have some opinions that are informed opinions, but what would be best is to hear from students that are currently studying in these programs or faculty that work there, coordinators, program chairs. What do you think is great about your architecture program and what can students expect to experience at your program? So the schools that get asked for a lot, uh, students often get accepted to TMU, uh, Toronto Metropolitan University, uh, Carleton Architecture, um, maybe Waterloo Architecture, Laurentian, OCAD U, Environmental Design. Um, maybe they get accepted to UBC, Sala, um, Dalhousie, McGill, uh, University of Toronto. How does a student decide what's the best program for them? And so I want to reach out to the community to share your comments below or reach out to me to arrange an interview where we can talk about what works for you as a student, what do faculty members find is really great about the program you're teaching in, or to hear from the admin and program chairs. Um, so my understanding of some of these programs are as follows, or for students. So if you're watching this and you're a student who's trying to figure out where should I accept, I think it's a multifaceted decision to make. Obviously, look at the rankings of schools. Which school is more highly ranked? There's usually really good reasons for that. So you could search up, um, you know, maybe uh, for Canada, look on McLean's uh, magazine, their listing of top ranked schools. There's uh, listings that you can look at for world rankings, top world rankings of universities. That can help you with your decision, but ultimately it's up to you. You're the individual to make that decision. So rankings aren't the only thing to consider. So I would like to give some of my my opinions, what I've come across or what I've heard from students that have studied in these programs. Uh, but I think the first thing is to think about yourself and what you need. You have to make your decision by June 1st in most cases. That's not long from now. I'm recording this on May 25th. How are you going to make that decision? So you can do some research. Um, look up on Reddit. Look at what people say and have posted, hey, I'm studying here or I got accepted there. What are students saying? And I've put an ask out to the community of students and faculty. What do they think is great about their program and why should a student accept it? But the first thing I want to say to, to you, if you're trying to make that decision, is it's a personal decision. Part of it is career goals and part of it is what's right for you. So here's a few thoughts you might consider. Do you feel for your well-being, for your first year of university, if this is your first year, would it help you to be close to home? Are you somebody who needs to be close to your friends and need to get home quickly and easily and affordably? If you have financial constraints, that's more of a concern, right? How would you do that transportation back and forth? So that's one. The next thing might be, um, what kind of urban environment feels right for you? Where would you feel healthy and supported? So you might say, hey, I love being in smaller communities. I love being near nature. Um, I love hands-on learning. You know, you might want to consider a program where you could be in a more rural situation or closer to nature. So some opportunities might be Laurentian 
things in Sudbury. You might want to say if you applied to Dalhousie in Halifax, well, it's a big city. It's kind of a, a town feeling city, close to gorgeous nature, right? And a very friendly um, environment on the East Coast. It's a little less pressured than studying in Toronto. You might, if you get so lucky to get accepted to UBC, um, excellent school, gorgeous, beautiful mountains and close to the ocean, um, although more expensive to live. So there's so many choices. What's the right price point for you where to live? How close to home do you need to be? What kind of environment do you need to be near in nature? Or do you love the intensity and job opportunities in a city environment? So you might prefer to study in Ottawa or Carleton, or you might prefer to study in Montreal at McGill, or maybe downtown Toronto is the right place for you. So there's those kind of decisions to make too. Housing, looking into um, what kind of support services each school has if you need accommodations. And if you need accommodations, go get them right away at the beginning of the year. Don't wait till you're struggling. Find out right at the beginning of the semester while you're still got energy, um, you know, before things get really intense, what supports are in that school and know where they are so that if you ever have a problem, you can find that support right away, okay, easily. Um, most schools have good supports for students and uh, it's important to use them and know what they are. Research that before you go and as soon as you get there. Okay, so I'm a college prof myself, and I, I see the struggles students go through. Um, faculty and support services are there to help you thrive in your education. So use those facilities, okay? Another aspect you want to consider when choosing the right university for yourself are things like, do you have a particular faith that means that you need to make sure that there's a spiritual center near you that will help you have a community and be able to do prayers or go to services um, to protect your well-being? Are there exercise facilities of the type that you require? Most universities will have good facilities that way. Um, are there support services for um, for yourself, for your community, for if you're an international student, what are the supports like for, for you? And um, are there cultural clubs where you could feel like you're part of a community and have that support? Um, what kind of fiscal and, and financial supports are there in the community? You know, doing a little bit more research can help you make a good decision. Obviously, top-ranked school great idea, go to a top ranked school, but you want to make sure that everything's there in that community that you require for your well-being. Um, I think sometimes students get fixated on thinking about just, you know, going to a top ranked school and not remembering that they also need to take care of their whole being in order to succeed in school. Uh, so those are some things. The other thing is, what are the residences like? What are the off-campus housing situation? What are the typical costs of that? Are you prepared for that? Um, other things can be, do you have any um, food intolerances or food allergies or other serious allergies? Check if the school, especially if you're staying in residence um, or that community, does that community have what you need for the way you need to eat. So those are some other considerations to just keep in mind. So it's a lot of research to have to do in a short period of time, um, but look into it to see if, to be sure that you can be healthy and successful. So there's other research you need to do before you decide. Go on a college tour if you can, before you make your decision, if you haven't yet. If you're gonna be spending four years of your education and lots of money, you know, doing that and lots of intense study. Studying architecture is not a light undertaking. It's often worth to go with your family to visit the schools. Even if there is no college tour, go there. Um, but 
what are some things that I'm aware of, which this is just things I've heard from other architects, I've heard through some research, I've heard from students. It's not absolute. What you really need to do is talk to the programs, talk to students in the programs. So try reaching out. Um, I'm going to be trying to interview more students that are currently studying in these different institutions. Um, and that can be interesting to hear their take on it. But every student's needs and experience can be different at different institutions. So, you know, ultimately, you got to try to decide and hope for the best. Um, but here's some advice from my point of view. Okay, so a lot of our students at Port Prep that get accepted to top-ranked schools, it's often uh, TMU, Waterloo, Carleton, um, U of T, maybe Laurentian, some UBC, some Dalhousie, some McGill. Um, so generally, it would probably be smart to accept the highest ranked school that you got accepted to because there's a reason for that ranking. You're going to have probably a better education, right? So some of the top ranked schools um, include Waterloo and UBC, probably in my opinion, and what I hear tend to be the more highly sought after programs for undergrad. I'm talking about undergrad right now. Um, and Carleton is highly regarded, probably right behind those. Um, and then TMU right after that. Um, in my, in my opinion, and of course this can change year to year if you look up university rankings and rankings aren't the only thing that matter to a student, right? Trying to choose a program that's right for you. So this is what I've heard. And if faculty members, admin, students, if you think that this is incorrect information, I want to know, I want to hear from you. What do you think? So this is the vibe I catch. So here it goes. All right, so in, in no particular order, let's see. So let's say Waterloo. Um, so Waterloo University, um, what's great about it is that it's a guaranteed co-op program. So that really helps get uh, your job, you know, in the future, get some good experience. So any program that offers co-op, at least in part, is great. If it's guaranteed, hallelujah, right? Wonderful. Um, one of the things that's great about that I've heard from students about Waterloo, what they like about it, while it's intense, like any architecture program, they enjoy the sort of uh, creative freedom of thought in first year. And that's kind of problem-based learning. They start with their ideas and then learn how to do it. So it's, it's more uh, creatively led and then into the technical, at least that's what I've heard. Um, again, I'd like to hear from the faculty specifically about it. Um, I'm a portfolio coach or tutor, um, and I didn't study at any of those institutions. I studied at other institutions. So, you know, this, but carrying on, um, Waterloo is well known. It's got a diverse student body from all over the world. Um, lots of hands-on learning in various ways, excellent facilities, uh, some people really love that it's in this concentrated architecture building uh, next to some art galleries. Some people love that it's in a small community. So Waterloo is, architecture is not in Waterloo, Ontario, where the main campus is, which is one of the top ranked schools in Canada, especially for maths and sciences. Um, but it's in Cambridge, Ontario, a small, quaint kind of city next to the river. And some people really like that quaint, um, smaller city vibe. That might not be what you're looking for at for your university. Maybe you need to be in a more urban city environment than a small city like Cambridge. Um, there's so much more to know about why choose Waterloo. Go to Waterloo to find out. Um, so, but any student that I've had get accepted there that I've assisted in their creative development, and you should know if you do come to me for Waterloo, I'm very careful in guiding students because um, what's really important for Waterloo is that you are your, a unique creative thinker in your own way. And um, that what you're getting from a portfolio tutor if you're applying to school like that is, is skills, um, different skills, 
help just maybe moving through the creative thought process that you're having, just guidance along the way, so that you're really sure that anything you make for Waterloo needs to be your own thoughts, your own work. Um, avoid working with portfolio coaches who are more controlling of your outcome. You really need somebody that respects your independent creative thought because that's what Waterloo wants. They don't want to feel like you've been coached in some way. So I'm really respectful of each individual student's creative uh, vision and path and just support it with skills and a bit of bouncing thoughts back and forth, right? Um, or practicing for the interview, things like that. Um, so if you're a, a really creative thinker like that, Waterloo might be a really great place for you. Um, and if you like a smaller city environment, yay. Um, let's see, what else? Carlton. Carlton is known to be a very, um, I guess, philosophical, um, you know, conceptual sort of architecture school, from what I know, balanced with some really great education, lots of creative opportunities, um, really understanding the, the design process and pushing the creative boundaries in first year. Um, from what I've seen and heard, um, you know, when you apply to Carleton, they they have these creativity prompts that are usually fairly esoteric with a lot of creative thoughts, freedom. Uh, you know, they don't tell you too specifically because they just want to see what kind of creative thinker you are. And so that's quite challenging. And so th they really want artistic, free thinking, conceptual, global thinkers um, applying to their school. So if you're that kind of really creative person who loves to think deeply and symbolically and, and delve into how that kind of thought can help us design the urban environment in a more effective way, Carleton might be a really great choice for you. It's in Ottawa, wonderful uh, city, again, a kind of small city, you know, hub of Canada, you know, because the Canadian government parliament is there. Um, so that's, you know, exciting place to be that uh, has more of a social life than Waterloo. It's a more vibrant community in that way. I mean, Waterloo uh, architecture, because it's in Cambridge. Um, so you might really enjoy being in a bigger city um that has that conceptual base that's practical um so i think for creatives carlton's wonderful again very challenging to get accepted into though so it's not always uh, an option for students um of course ubc fantastic it's kind of similar in a way to um waterloo and carlton conceptual based school um, with really solid training that gets you ready for education, uh, sorry, that gets you ready for the your career, excellent facilities, um, a really broad-based education in the first year, from what I understand that, um, you know, there, you could be going into landscape design or urban design, or, you know, there's various sort of specializations you can go through from what I know about it. Um, and so again, very high level students get accepted there that are very creative and think deeply, really thorough education and absolutely gorgeous, amazing campus. So, you know, I mean, when I've had students that get accepted to UBC, they're just so thrilled to be accepted there. They kind of go, okay, well, it, maybe it's far from home, but it's UBC. <laughs> I think I better go. Um, it's intense, like any of the programs from what I hear. So I'm looking forward to interviewing more of my students that have been accepted to some of these schools to hear their direct experiences. That's one reason why I'm making this video, asking people, if you're studying there, if you work there, tell us something about it in the comments or reach out. Let's, let's interview. Let's inform students and families so they can make the decisions right for them. Where will you fit? Um, what else? Okay. TMU, wonderful school, Toronto Metropolitan University, architectural science. You may know it from its past name. It was called Ryerson for very good reasons. They got rid of that name. Um, so I apologize for using it here. 
Um, so very important that that name be um, struck because I gather Ryerson was involved in residential schools for uh, First Nations people across Canada um, and particularly in Ontario. So um, I am really support their decision to rename it. Um, so that program, though, is really well known as a really solid, excellent education and give you a really good grounding and wonderful balance between uh, the conceptual and the practical and the more sort of technological uh, advancements in architecture. So wonderful balance of both really prepares students to work in the industry. This is what I know of the program. Uh, please let me know in the comments if, if you agree. Now, I have heard from students that go there that they love that there is co-op opportunities, but they have to achieve a certain grade to be eligible. So it's not open for everybody or guaranteed. Um, so that's something um, to be aware of. And But there's still lots of job opportunities in the Toronto area in architecture or architectural technology. So that's good. Um, I hear it's incredibly tough, um, quite high pressure, although I suspect that's true for any architecture program. Um, but I'm interested to hear, like, what is the stress level like in these programs for people that are going? Um, and because I've heard some people that are at Carleton, they absolutely love it. And I've heard from other students that have went there that it was just too stressful. And, and really, really hard for them. Um, what's your experience? Uh, so sometimes these are things that you have to decide. Like if you could find out more, what is it like to study in a particular program? What do you think will be right for you? Do you have an anxiety disorder? Um, are you really well organized? Do you, do you love, um, you know, having a lot of, a lot of things on the go and you have a, a deep fervor? You need to be very committed if you want to do well in any of those top ranked programs. If you're concerned about your ability to take on a lot, no matter how brilliant and creative you are, if you know that you don't do well under a lot of pressure with a lot of deadlines, you might want to consider a less highly ranked school where you can learn at the pace that's comfortable for you and stay well and still learn about architecture and go get a job. So, you know, you don't have to go to the top ranked school if you think it's going to not suit who you are and your well-being, right? Because architecture school is tough. I've heard from a past student, they used to call architecture school architorture. <laughs> And, but it's interesting when I hear from some students, they're like, I love it. You know, yeah, it was a lot, but I loved it. I just thrived. And other people, they tell me like, it was overwhelming, it, overwhelming amount of work and pressure. And some people said they didn't like the work, the, the intense work ethic and expectation to do, to take on extra things like extra um, competitions and, and things like this. So yeah, I think it's an individual decision. Um, how you want to go about your education and where you want to get it. Um, but if you picked any of those schools, that's fantastic, right? Um, and, you know, I've heard some students that, oh, they really wanted to, they got accepted to McGill and they love speaking French. They're very comfortable. The love Montreal is amazing. Oh, I love Montreal too. Oh, I get it. Um, and the, you know, the education is great. McGill is very highly ranked. I've heard from some students, they went on a college tour and then they just thought, mm, they think some more money needs to be infused into the program to, to update their, some of their studios and their workshops and their equipment. So, you know, or does that matter to you? Yeah, you know, go visit the schools to get comfort level of what do you want out of your education, right? Um, and the environment you're in. Um, what else I heard? I've heard some really positive things about Dalhousie. Uh, I don't know a lot about it though. I have to uh, admit. So, and I don't know a lot about McGill's other than that. I've heard some people think, please, McGill, if you're, if anybody from McGill is listening, in, you know, invest some more money in your architecture department if you can, because I've heard a few students who were really thinking about it, decided against it. Although I, I've heard some other students went and they loved it. So, you know, it's individual. Basically, I guess is the 
the gist of it. Um, now, Laurentian is a school that some um, some people, it's a, I hear it's a little bit easier to get accepted into. Um, and I've had students that have gone there and they've loved it. They love how hands-on it is. They love being in a smaller, um, more uh, natural community with lots of nature around them. They love that hands-on making with wood. Uh, I don't know if they still do this, but uh, for many years they made, they would have groups of students that would design and build like an ice hut like an ice fishing hut and then go out and put it on the lake uh, like that sounds cool if you love nature and you you love the the northern ontario and you want a smaller environment that's hands-on maybe not quite as pressuring you might enjoy that and it might give you exactly what you need i had a past student that did her undergrad and her master's there so you know it's an individual decision Here's another one for you. What about U of T architecture? What do people think of it? What do the faculty think? What do architects out there think of U of T architecture? What are the students' experiences with it? I've heard various things and I'm not sure what to think. Um, there's just one architect I know who he wanted to dissuade his own daughter from applying there. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. Um, he particular in that that architect in particular didn't like to hire students from U of T, but why would that be? Um, I don't as a portfolio tutor, I I don't really know. I just know how to help students make strong portfolios that get them accepted to whatever school they want. Um, so I'm really looking forward to hearing people's opinion of what their experiences have been with U of T or University of Toronto architecture. Oh, there was one I forgot. I forgot OCAD U. A lot of students get accepted into OCAD U environmental design and it's a really unique program. Um, so, so it's, you know, in first year I gather you explore different types of design. I mean, they're looking at, at um, um, interior architecture, architecture, urban design, landscape, like just like design in general from what I know about it. Um, and if I'm correct in my understanding, it's more of a interior architecture, interior design kind of um, program. But OCAD U, as, because it began as an art school, right? Ontario College of Art, and it became Ontario College of Art and Design, and now it's a university. And it's known for being very, very creative, very leading edge, very, um, um, you know, if you had to compare ice cream, so we could have vanilla, right, as a basic school, um, or you could have the uh, Ben and Jerry's, you know, Cherry Garcia ice cream, like unusual, uh, creative, pushing the boundaries of what design can be, um, you know, uh, very creative, free thinking, um, design program and assignments are designed to invite that creative um, way of moving through um, a problem. Um, you know, more leading edge interior design, not not just conventional. Um, so if you're a really creative person, like to think on the edges of design, uh, you're not looking for just like this totally practical education that's just going to get you a great job. You know, OCAD U might be this wonderful place to be. Like it's such a creative environment, so much creative stuff going on up there. Um, right downtown Toronto, you know, right beside the AGO. You know, if you're a, sort of a really artistic kind of a designer, um, this could be a really great opportunity for you. Um, I think if you want to go into architecture per se though you'd probably be more probably picking a, a architecture program specifically is probably better suited but if you plan to do your master's and you want that broader base education for your undergrad you know environmental um, design might be a good choice for you um, but if it's not really architecture right it's more interior architecture and so in my understanding again invite anybody from OCADU to tell us more about it or make some videos and link them somehow so that we can share this. Um, 
reach out to me and let's share some links. We can share some links on our social media so that people can find that information more easily. If, I guess if you've been, depending on where you've been accepted. So if it were me and I was applying and this is what I would choose, which is not necessarily what you would choose. But if I got accepted to our, to UBC, I would go to UBC in a heartbeat. Um, if I got accepted to, um, uh, to Carleton, I think I'd really love love to go there, love to live in Ottawa. It sounds like an exciting uh, education opportunity. I would totally enjoy that. Um, so with regards to McGill, for me, I think because I love Montreal and the culture there so much, like I just feel at home there. I might accept that even if they didn't have the up-to-date, you know, the best um, you know, 3D printers or whatever, um, because I thrive in Montreal, right? I love it. Such a creative city. Um, if I got accepted to, let's say I had to decide between TMU and uh, Carleton. I think for me, because I'm also like an artist, I'd, I probably would want Carleton. And because I know Toronto already, and I love Toronto, but I think I'd enjoy being somewhere else. Um, and I hear it's very creative, so I'd probably choose that. So you see how there's different decisions. If I got accepted to TMU and Laurentian, even though I love the North, I do, and I love small cities, if I was trying to decide on what's going to be best for my career, I'd probably take the higher rank school. I'd, I'd, I'd accept TMU over Laurentian. Um, but that's just me right um so anyway i hope this rambling uh discussion helps you make the decision by june 1st if you're still listening um and i do hope that i can hear some of your thoughts so if you're going on college tours now you're seeing the campus tours and you make a decision please add a comment parents, students, whatever, what were your experiences of these campuses? Uh, if you're studying there, what's your experience like? If you're faculty, if you're admin, what do you think is wonderful about your school? And I would love to interview with anybody that wants to share their experiences. Was it positive and, and fantastic? Was it negative? Did it destroy your mental and physical health? Um, what advice do you have for surviving and thriving in an architecture program? These would be great things. I would love, in our channel, we don't get a lot of comments in our videos, but this is one that deserves it. So please comment below and reach out to me at portprep.com um, to tell us more about your program and your experiences. Uh, good luck making your decisions wherever you've been accepted and uh, wherever you are, and wherever you end up, you're going to get an education. Make the most of it. Enjoy your. I'm Karen from Port Prep. I'm the architecture portfolio tutor. We help students and families learn how to prepare their portfolios and their applications, and then sometimes make a decision where to go. So if you've been accepted and you're not sure which one to, to accept, hopefully this video helps you. If you want to talk about it with me, happy to talk with you. Best yet, reach out to the institution to find out more about it. Okay. Take care, everybody.